All right, so for social media, for your business day one, I want to mention a couple of conceptual things, and then we're going to get hands-on with Twitter. So I'm going to be writing notes, and you can write notes on a piece of paper or in the computer or your email or whatever, but I'm going to write a few notes. Um, I've got the, the Notepad app if you want to write notes on your computer. You can go to the Start menu, uh, Notepad. I'm going to write notes, and I'll put these notes in the network folder at the end of the day. So you can write your own notes or not, but I'm going to add my notes to the network folder at the end of the day. One quick thing, if you want to use your own laptop or tablet or whatever, um, our network is called uh, NCC Wireless, and our password is um, CE Fall 2016. Make a note of that, I'm going to erase it. Uh, but that's our network, NCC Wireless. Oops, wireless. And the uh, password CE Fall 2016, this is all lowercase. And a quick reminder also if you haven't muted your devices, remember to do that. Put your devices on vibrate. You may love your ringtone, but I probably won't. Okay, so social media for your business. Purpose. Marketing. You're going to use social media as a marketing tool. Marketing is another word for advertising. You're going to advertise your business. You're going to make people aware of your business or company or brand or product or paintings or nonprofit organization. Whatever. You're going to use social media to build an audience. So tangibly, use social media to build or to get followers. Different networks have different names. On Twitter, they're followers. On uh, Facebook, they're fans. Different names, but they're all the same concept. You want to get followers. You want to get people that are paying attention to you. Followers are people paying attention to you on social media. Followers, they're paying attention to you. Fans on Facebook, they're paying attention to you. Um, the more universal term is followers. That's what most networks call them, but some networks you know, say they've circled you or they've liked your page, they're, they're a fan, different names but same concept, they're followers, they're paying attention to you. So you want to get you know, 20 followers on Twitter, you want to get 50 likes on Facebook, you want to get 100 followers on, on Instagram, you want to get circled by 500 people on Google+, whatever the term is, you want to get followed on the social networks because followers are a captive audience. As I said earlier, uh, marketing 1.0, real-world marketing, is um, a sign on the wall, a billboard out on the highway, uh, a radio ad on your, on your radio, a TV ad, uh, a little video that plays before the main video you want to watch, marketing in the, in the real world. It's, it's advertising is a way to build awareness. If there's a restaurant, if you're a, the owner of a restaurant and you want customers, well, we have various ways to get customers. One is that perhaps someone walks in front of the restaurant, sees your logo, and walks in to eat something. And then maybe through word of mouth tells more people, this is a great pizza shop, visit it. Okay, I'm building an audience, I'm building customers. Well, that's only going to take you so far. So in the real world, if you've got a restaurant, you also have to probably engage in putting your ad in the penny saver. Well, don't do that because they shut it down. Um, the Union Tribune. 
you want to put your ad in the Union Tribune in that one magazine. What's it called? One plus one or buy one get one? You know that one magazine that we get all the time? Put your ad in the yellow pages. Put your ad uh, on a billboard. Have that person standing outside the corner flipping that sign around. Um, put a, a radio ad on, on 91X or something. That's old school marketing, classic marketing, marketing 1.0. That's what you would do for a, for a restaurant in the real world. And now in Web 2.0, in Marketing 2.0, it's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's Snapchat, it's YouTube, it's all of these networks. Now, the big difference then, captive audience. Uh, I put that sign, that billboard, up on the 5, and a thousand people see it every day as they commute. But a very small percentage of people are going to pay attention to that billboard. Especially as time goes on, it'll just be white noise. As they drive on their commute, they're going to keep, they're going to ignore that sign as time goes on. Perhaps one point they do need a plumber, and they remembered your billboard and the phone number, and they call you, and you've got a sale. Perhaps after the person hears your ad on the radio enough times, they remember you, and then they call you when they need you. But a lot of times we're tuning out those ads on the billboard, on TV. We fast forward through the, through the ads on TV nowadays if you've got a DVR. So social media then is marketing and advertising, but someone has chosen to follow you to see your message. A follower is a potential customer. You can track effectiveness or efficacy. efficacy. What's the difference between effectiveness and efficacy? But the effectiveness, the efficacy of your, um, of your efforts, you can track the e efficacy of your social media to see what's working and what's not. So that billboard that you paid hundreds of dollars of hundreds of dollars for, you you know that it's working when someone calls you or you make a sale. But you don't know how many people saw the billboard as a ratio of to how many people called you via social media, we have many ways to track that. They're called oftentimes insights or analytics statistics given to you for free by the networks. I'm going to say networks, social networks, social media, I'm going to use different words, but the networks, the platform, Twitter, Facebook, etc. The network, the platform will give you these insights for free. It'll tell you uh, this tweet was seen by a thousand people, and it was then clicked on by 500 people, which could then could have resulted in 50 sales. So you'll get these insights, these analytics, these statistics that will tell you how effective you're being. In the world of marketing, we have the terms of uh, impressions, conversions, and CTR. How many times did people see your message? Conversions. How many times did people interact with your message? We'll see later that interact is a nebulous term. There's many ways to count an interaction. Um, so we don't exactly tie them with a direct sale and such, but uh, an interaction like a like or a retweet might be very valuable to eventually get you to a sale. Um, but conversions often have more value than impressions. Yes? Can you make it uh, snow? I cannot see the uh, lighting. I will be moving in and out and zooming in and out uh, in just a moment, yes. Yes, if I zoom out this far, it's a little harder to see, but I'll be zooming in and out, and I'll be moving around, and, and, I'll, and I'm, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this file in the network folder at the end of the day also.
So, um, CTR then is the uh, click through rate. Click through rate. CTR's click through rate, which is conversion divided by impressions. Conversions divided by impressions. Um, conversion, I'm sorry, this is backwards. Impressions divided by conversions. No, wait, that's right. Someone's phone may be on? There's somebody's iPad. Huh. Someone left an iPad? We're trying to find it now. Can I get a volunteer to take it downstairs? Find my iPad. Let's take it downstairs. Somebody left it. All right, so um, conversions divided by impressions. That's the correct one, sorry. Conversions divided by impressions. Uh, impressions are simply that someone saw your tweet or someone saw your Instagram picture or in the real world someone saw your billboard. Impressions. People were impressed by it. People saw it. But the conversion is that someone actually clicked your link in the tweet or called you from that billboard. That was a conversion because they were converted from a non-action into an action. So if someone simply saw your tweet, they haven't been converted yet. They haven't clicked the link of your tweet to go to your website. They haven't um, watched your video yet. They may have seen the thumbnail preview of your video impression, but they haven't clicked to view it. It's a conversion. So conversions divided by impressions is a CTR, click-through rate, and it's a percentage. So if I had, let's say, 25 clicks out of uh, 1,024 impressions, 1,024 people saw my tweet and 25 actually clicked, doing a little math here, 25 divided by 1,024, that's in percentage, 2.44% CTR, 2.44% effectiveness. It could be one measurement of how well you've done on a particular platform, or more specifically, on a particular Facebook post, Facebook picture, whatever social media you're doing. You might say, that's really low. Not really, because in even in old school classic marketing, you're going to have very low numbers. If I'm engaged only in real world marketing and I'm cold calling people, I might call 20 people and one calls me back to make a sale. What's one divided by 20? That's a very low number. One divided by 20. It's less than, that's half a percent. Did I get to it? One divided by 20? Oh, five percent. So even that's a really low number there because people will uh, very easily perhaps pay attention to you or see your tweet and such, but then suddenly it's much harder to convince them to buy or to click or to call you or to subscribe. So uh, don't be surprised if, you're, if your click-through rate is in single digits. If you're in double digits, 10%, 50%, and all of that, okay, you're amazing. 50% conversion rate, that's half the people that see your message are, are buying your product. That could be very amazing. It's also very hard to do that. Uh, that's why companies like McDonald's spend billions of dollars a year to get their message out in as many ways as possible. 
uh, radio ad, TV ad, Twitter ad, Facebook ad, Instagram ad, lots of platforms, lots of channels that the big companies are spending and investing in because the conversion rate, the CTR, is very small and trying to get as many as possible. So that's why the more followers you have, the higher your CTR could be, your click-through rate, your effectiveness. If I've got only 10 followers, that's very little amount of people that could follow through. You've got 100 followers, better. 1,000 followers, better. 10,000 followers, better. Because the 1% rule is in effect which is 1% of your followers are your true followers, are the ones that will buy your product or subscribe to your newsletter or donate to you. Whatever you're trying to do online, 1% it's study sh studies show 1% uh, are the ones that are going to be the most ardent or real that will do what you want them to do. So if I've got 100 followers, what's 1% of 100? One. One potential customer could really do it. And I'm not saying it's going to be this for everyone. But if that's our goal, if that's what the studies show, that means I need to get followers. I need to get people to be aware of me. I need to get people to subscribe or follow or circle me or like my page so that they become this target audience, this captive audience. So with social media, we want to build followers because of the 1% rule. Now, I may be amazing and have a 5% effectiveness. That's still 5%. Out of 100 followers, that's 5 people that will buy your product, perhaps. And again, you may be amazing and you may put out great stuff on social media, then you're closer to 50%. Still, if I've got 10 followers, 50% is 5 people. Can I build my business on 5 people? Out of 100 people, 50% is 50 people. Okay, we're getting a little more viable, but really, it's going to be in the single digits that people are going to be most uh, active or real or ready to pay. That's why it's important to build followers. And of course, we'll talk about in this class how to get followers. Um, and it can be a, a long process, or it depends on your demographics and your product and a variety of things. That's why I do have to say early on in the class, in this class and also my SEO class, you may follow all of the techniques that we present here. And you may do these techniques, you know, nonstop. And still, you're not having very good results you may have many factors against you. You may have a lot of competition. You are yet another, uh, you know, vegetarian um, bakery in La Jolla. So you've got competition and you can't really get a lot of customers. Or you may have um, a product perhaps that isn't as in demand as you thought. Um, you may be uh, a little fish in a big pond, and there's lots of other fish. Uh, there may be various factors why you're not uh, succeeding in social media, even if you do every single thing I talk about here. But through personal experience, I've seen with our clients, as I said, not only do I teach this, but I'm part of a company that we do this, I've seen for our clients that it works what we'll be talking about, about creating these accounts and using them on a regular basis and all the things I'm going to talk about and the techniques to get followers and all of that. But the one thing that I can't teach you exactly is what do you specifically need to do to reach your audience? Because I can talk about these concepts about tweet this kind of picture or tweet at this time, but it depends on your audience. That audience doesn't pay attention at the time that I'm telling you. That audience doesn't respond to this kind of picture that I'm telling you. So everyone's going to vary a little bit to some degree, but the concepts we'll talk about are rather universal. <coughs> Any questions so far?
Okay, so the first network we're going to talk about then is Twitter. One more show of hands. How many of you currently have a Twitter account? Okay, a little bit less than half. So uh, what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to get hands-on. I'm going to open uh, a Twitter account. If you don't have a Twitter account, I'll take a quick moment to create one at this point. If you do have one, you can log into it. Uh, but before that, let me say most social media has a personal version and a business version. Facebook, I'll say uh, social networks with a uh, business version, Facebook, Pinterest, Google Plus. without a business version. Twitter. Instagram is kind of half and half at the moment. For a long time, Instagram was you didn't have a business version. But if you didn't know, Facebook bought Instagram a couple of years ago for literally a billion dollars and they've left it alone pretty much for a few years until very recently this year they started to change Instagram now and now uh, some of these aspects of Facebook are starting to seep into Instagram so probably eventually Instagram I'll move it over into the business version column and just Twitter will be by itself and probably Twitter will move to this column as well when they see that it's not going to work for them but the point of there being a business and a personal one is that the network wants you to use the business tools to reach an audience. The personal account might not give you, for example, insights. A person doesn't need to know that their tweet was seen by a thousand people if I'm only uh, sharing it with my friends and family. But a business needs to know that my tweet or my Instagram picture reached a thousand people and how many of them clicked. So the business versions have these extra features that the personal ones don't. And we will talk about if on Facebook you're using a personal one instead of a business one. We'll talk about how to convert it, of course. Today we're going to talk about Twitter, and it doesn't matter if you've got a personal or a business one. And so you want to open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Go ahead and launch any web browser. We'll go to twitter.com. So we're going to talk about twitter.com today. I'm going to mention a few addresses here that we will look into more detail a little later. There's the main login, of course. Then there's um, analytics.twitter.com. For your stats, you'll be able to find these links when we log in in a different place, but here, uh, if you want to go to those addresses directly at some point, you'll see that. And then we've got tweetdeck.twitter.com for multiple user login. When we look at the other networks, Facebook and Google+, Plus, for example, those have the ability for you to add more managers to them meaning more than one person can log into the Facebook and work on it. Upload a picture, make changes, talk to customers. Facebook, Google+, Plus, those have that. They can have multiple managers. Therefore, everyone logs in with their own login. At the moment, and for a long time, Twitter has basically been one login will log everyone in at the same time which is a big security vulnerability. Because if everyone has the same password, 
to log into the same company account and one person doesn't practice very good cybersecurity, the account gets hacked. And that happens all the time. A few years ago, I remember teaching this class, and what had happened one day before I was going to talk about a topic was that Chipotle got hacked, the Chipotle Twitter account. And someone hacked in and started to post all of these racist Nazi imagery all over Chipotle. And that was in the middle of the night, like on a Saturday night, so someone had to come in in the middle of the night and fix it. And they got it under control, but the problem was because Twitter, everyone was logging in with one password. Eventually Twitter got smart. And now they have this system, TweetDeck, which allows different people to log into the same Twitter account, but with their own password. And the purpose of that is that if one of my coworkers gets hacked, I can log in with my login to the account and fix it. Whereas if someone, if there's only one login and it gets hacked, well, everyone's in trouble because one login has been compromised. So, this is just some login links for you. If you have an account, you can, uh, you can log in on the top right corner. If you don't have an account, I'll take a moment to create an account. I'm going to click sign up now. This is optional, technically. You don't have to create an account. You don't have to log in. You can do it all at home. If you're not comfortable using our computers, that's fine. Our computers, however, are pretty safe because we've got this software called Deep Freeze. You might see a little icon of a little polar bear in the corner, but that's Deep Freeze, which is protecting the computer. If you turn off the computer and you forgot to log out, it will delete your login information. It will delete whatever you did on our computer. Uh, so if, if you do anything personal on our computers, just turn it off and it'll erase it. And before I leave, I turn them off and everything gets erased. So I'm going to go through the sign-up process. You can simply log in. Uh, Twitter has a full name and a username. Your company name. Username. Your Twitter address. It may seem like that much of a difference, but the difference is that with full name, let's say I've got uh, a fictional company, Victor's Bakery, and I want to create a Twitter account. So the full name of my Twitter account would be Victor's Bakery. It makes it sound like I need to put a person's name under full name, but no, I would put the name of my business under full name. My Twitter address then, username, would be at Victor's Bakery. You see the full name can have spaces and capitalization and special symbols. Right, I can call it Victor's Bakery. But the Twitter address cannot have spaces symbols except the underscore and that's the it's also you can call it the at name because of the at symbol it's my twitter address because also that's tied to http colon slash slash twitter dot com slash victor's bakery The full name doesn't tie into the address. The full name up here is not actually an address, just a username. Both of these can be edited whenever you want. We'll see how a little later. And the reason also for this distinction is that uh, Usernames are unique, full names are not unique, which means one person or company in the world, because Twitter is global, can, can have Victor's Bakery. One entity in the world can claim that name at Victor's Bakery. 
However, anyone can create a Twitter account and put their full name as Victor's Bakery. But it's not unique. So there are many parody accounts out there that have a full name of a famous person or celebrity or company, whatever, but then the actual at name, the username, this address here is something completely different because there's only one of that one in the world. And then unfortunately, if someone has claimed that username, you're not going to really be able to get it away from them. If, you know, some punk kid created Victor's Bakery for fun, and I want Victor's Bakery because I'm a real business, real Victor's Bakery, I'm not really going to have any recourse to get it away from him or her. If someone claimed that name, they claim the name, it's basically theirs, unfortunately, even if they haven't used it in years. And these social networks need to fix this. All of them are guilty of this, that if someone created this name and they haven't used it in years, and I want the name because I'm going to use the name, they don't really release it. They do that for the big names and celebrities and such. They don't do it for us, the little people, yet. So that means, unfortunately, if Victor's Bakery is already taken, I'm going to need to be something like Victor's Bakery SD in San Diego. I'm going to need to be something else, like Victor's Bakery 1 because the name was taken. So it would be that simple Just one letter, and then it's a new unique name, and then you can claim that one. Uh, username is coming up on a, on a screen in, in a moment. Right now it's just full name. If I'm creating an account, that's what it's asking for here. What's your company name? It doesn't say company name, but there's no differentiator between businesses at the moment and personal. So let's say I'm creating Victor's Bakery phone number or email. I need some valid phone number or email uh, to see that you are a legitimate business, a legitimate entity, because since anyone can create a Twitter account, any spammer can create a, a, a Twitter account or a Facebook account or a Instagram account. I'm just going to put a some sort of email address. You can make up a password for your Twitter or use an existing password you've used before. A more secure password is better because Twitter and all of these networks are a target. People are trying to break into them, steal credit cards or accounts or whatever. So a good password is better, better than this. But for my purposes, I'll just put a basic password. If you're creating the account, they may ask you to tailor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Uh, Twitter and all the networks uh, want to show you content that you're going to care about, especially if you're a person. Uh, and so leaving this active will show you tweets. If I visit a lot of tech websites, Twitter will see that and say, you're visiting a lot of tech websites. Here's some tech Twitter accounts or some tech tweets that you might be interested in for a person that could be useful because then I can keep up to date with technology stuff on Twitter. For a business, it would still also be useful because one of the many techniques we'll talk about with Twitter and all the networks is your company should follow other related companies on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. We'll see why in more detail a little later, but basically this is for your company to keep up to date with the industry to get inspiration. Again, I'll, I'll go into de detail a little later. Uh, but it's valuable for your company to follow other companies or other related Twitter accounts, other Instagram accounts, other Facebook accounts related to your business. It doesn't have to be your direct competitor. You probably don't want that. But any other related competitor. Let's say I'm this bakery. I'm not going to follow Hilda's Bakery down the street. But I'm going to follow John's Bakery in New York. Not to make competitors, but bakers, or bakeries. I want to see what they're doing on Twitter, what they're doing effectively, so I can not steal what they're doing, but synthesize what they're doing to do my version of it, to see what trends or what they've done and what I can do, but better. Your company should follow other related companies to scope the competition, get inspiration. 
scoop followers. Again, we'll talk about these things in detail later. But whatever I mention here for Twitter will apply for Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook. That's why I said it generically. That's what that check mark is here. The short answer. If you don't want Twitter to pay attention to your website visits, you can turn it off. It's basically it's going to put a cookie on your computer to track you. And yes, it sounds scary and all of that. But if you don't want that, you can just turn it off. Yes, you can turn that off on a separate screen once we're inside the system. Or you can turn it back on or off. On or off, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get the username in just one moment. But it's also true on your full name here. At a certain point, I ran out of space. I believe it's 15 characters, so that's a, that's a detriment. Next screen, sign up. It might ask me for my phone number, and this often happens when I'm teaching this because Twitter might see, why are 20 people trying to create a, a Twitter account at once from the same room? It must be a room full of hackers. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get a message here about the phone number, there is a skip button. Hopefully it'll let you skip it. If it doesn't let you skip it, uh, we're going to take a break soon, and after a little bit of time passes, you should be able to set this up. It's just that Twitter's like, why are so many people logging in at once? I'm going to try to skip it, see if it lets me. Okay, it seems to have let me, so then we've got username. This is the one about there's only one of these throughout the whole world. Okay, I'm going to set up with no spaces or special characters except underscores. I'm going to set up Victor's Bakery. This username is already taken. So someone got the username at some point. Again, I'm not really going to be able to take it away from someone else, especially if they're using it. Yes, question? No? Question? No, okay. Uh, so I need to choose something else, and it's suggesting, well, Victor's Bakery 1 or 3 or 5 or something. Or I could do, how about Victor's underscore bakery? That's a good one. No, that's been taken. The only special character I can use is the underscore, not dashes or anything. What about underscore Victor's Bakery? That one's available. I could do the Victor's Bakery. Actually, I'm out of space. I can't even write the word the. There's 15 characters, but that one's available. So whatever makes sense here. I'll just go with Victor's Bakery 1. Don't choose the skip down here because it'll give you some gibberish name that you probably don't want. <coughs> you want a name, and this can be changed whenever you want. Next. Um, Twitter is my second favorite, personally, my second favorite social network. Um, I got on Twitter in 2009, and I use it all the time for personal and business. It's my fav second favorite. Um, I like that it's so open and immediate and you can get like unfiltered news globally. It's very powerful. Um, and Twitter is trying to tell you you can never use Twitter. Well, you can use it to keep up to date with news, media, celebrities. For us as a business, we can use it to reach an audience that will care about our product or business or nonprofit, etc. So I'll click let's go. There's this process then about, again, your company should follow a couple of other companies or customers on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Your company should follow others. Uh, we'll see the value of that in a little while. But my company, what's my company interested in or what's my company about? If any of these topics make sense, I would choose that. Mine's a food business. Yes? No, this process is known as an onboarding process, which is just like, this is what you see the first time you set up the account. You're not going to see this if you've already got the account, and it's okay if you don't, because uh, we'll talk about other techniques to get followers in a little while. Um, so my company is about food. I don't really see food here, I suppose, but uh, lifestyle, I suppose, is close enough. There we go, food and drink. I'm going to say food and drink. 
is the main topic of my business. Other things I can choose from, sure. The point of this is that then it will, when I continue, it'll suggest these are Twitter accounts that you might be interested in following. Well, one more thing. Uh, these, uh, if you would like to connect your address book of Outlook or Gmail to Twitter, it will tell you these are other people that you know that are on Twitter. Why not connect with them? Um, I have a disagreement in my own company about the value of this. I personally don't think this is valuable, but other people in my team do think it's valuable. What this is doing is it's saying, give us your address book and we'll tell you that John's on Twitter and Janet's on Twitter and, and Juan is on Twitter and why not connect with them? And yeah, you're building followers, but are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Are you going to tweet to them again that you've got another product? Are you going to tweet to them again, look at what I'm selling? Are you going to Facebook to them again, look at what I've got? Maybe. Maybe they will uh, enjoy your, your marketing content, maybe. Maybe they will buy your stuff and maybe you'll discover that they won't. And I don't want to break up any friendships. So, I usually skip this, but it may be valuable to you to reach out to your friends and family. And if you're using a, an email account of a business, maybe that's very valuable. If you've got an email devoted to your business and you've only got business contacts, maybe it's valuable to connect them here. If you already have a Twitter account on another screen, we can get back to this a little later. But during the onboarding process, the sign-up process, you see it directly. You say, no thanks. Okay, the point of selecting those topics a moment ago was now, it says, okay, you might be interested in following these food-related accounts. James Oliver, Food and Wine, uh, Nigella Lawson, Guy Fieri, etc. Bon Appetit. These have been checked on, and if I agree, I will follow those 21 accounts. My company Twitter account will follow those Twitter accounts and we'll see that the point of a follow or a like, etc., is to see their content. Whenever Jamie Oliver tweets anything, I'll see it. Whenever uh, Rachel Ray tweets anything, I'll see it. Whenever San Diego Magazine tweets anything, I'll see it. Well, we want the reverse of that eventually. I want followers. Okay so that when I tweet that coupon, when I tweet that photo of that luscious cupcake, I want my followers to see it. Impressions. And better yet, click to buy. Conversions. So if you don't want to follow any of these accounts, you can turn them on or off, all of them on or off, then you won't be following any accounts. But, as I said, a value, a value for your company to follow other Twitter accounts is because you'll check the competition, get inspiration, and I'll talk about later scooping their followers. You know, stealing their followers. Stealing is a bad word, but seeing their followers so that they can become my followers. <coughs> Question? Yeah, I'm sure you can answer this, but you can uh, unsubscribe to those tweets at any time. Yes. Yes, let's say I do decide to get all 21 of these accounts. And actually, I didn't really want to see this. They tweet too much. Later on, we'll see that we can easily unfollow any account. Yes? And all followers will be able to see your followers? Yes. Okay. It's pretty public. We have some control about privacy, but the default of Twitter is that it's very public, for good and for bad. And so that means that whatever 100 followers we have, other people can see who they are and try to steal them from us, too. We'll get to that bridge when we we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But um, mine's also suggesting local news outlets and such, news magazines. How does it know that? Well, our computer, if you didn't know, gives a lot of information away about us, such as a general location, and it kind of knows I'm in San Diego, so it might be valuable to follow these local institutions. It's up to you to decide yes or no. I'm going to leave them all on. Sure, I can turn them off um, later. So follow and continue. It's going to remind you, uh, turn on notifications. Um, eventually, I'll mention also about the Twitter app, the Instagram app, and um, 
this will alert to you when you've got a new follower and such. We'll talk about that. But here it's saying, would you also like to get alerts when you're on your web browser? Personally, I don't like that because I don't want all of these notifications all the time when I'm not even on Twitter. So I'm just going to keep it on my app, which I'll talk about later. So I'll say not now, and that can be turned on or off. You may not get this pop-up. It depends on the browser also. <clears throat> Actually, for the notification, it will send it to your email. It goes like 3,000, 4,000. So how do you stop that? Because on one of my emails, I could do it, and I don't know how I did it. And my second email, I can't. Uh, in, the, in your Twitter account, in your settings, there will be a spot there to not send me emails. I turn it off also because it sends too many, yeah. but it's going to be under your icon, under settings. Somewhere in there, there's going to be an option. Thank you. We're going to take a break soon, but I just want to confirm that everyone has either logged in or created the account. If you had any trouble, we're going to do the break soon. Before the break, I want to mention this is kind of in my section about, and I'll expand upon it, but how to get followers. And we'll see in detail a little bit more how we implement this one that I'm saying here. But another how to get followers, complete your profile. Again, I'm saying it generically because this applies on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Complete your profile. When we start off on Twitter, we don't have any branding. We don't have any profile set up. Basically, my Twitter account, your Twitter account looks like this. If you notice on the top right corner, if you're brand new, you're an egg. You haven't hatched yet. You just started on Twitter, you haven't hatched. If you click on your egg icon and view your profile, then this is what people will see here. Notice my address, twitter.com slash username. This is what people will see. A, just a blue icon or the egg for my logo, an empty blue field for my other branding spot, and no biographical information about my business. If you're a brand new business, this marks you as a spammer. You haven't put a logo, you haven't put information about your business, just like a spammer. If you have created your Twitter account previously, you may have your icon there, but still, if you if you click your icon view profile have you put in a bio here a biography have you put in some branding up here yes I just got locked out and it's telling me to take me back to the screen where you need to add your um, telephone number I think that's because it often happens when I teach this class and a lot of people are creating the account at once. It locks people out thinking there's too many people logging in. We're going to take a break very soon and then uh, it'll probably, we just give it a moment and then it'll let us continue eventually. So under this screen of view profile, there should be edit profile. If you click on the top right, there'll be a spot to add a header photo your logo so that you're no longer an egg. Here's where you can change here's where you can change the name of your full name, business name. On a different screen you change the username. It's under settings. Here's a spot for a bio. You can put a location, a website, and do a little bit of color branding and a birthday or founding day of your business. The point of this, like I said, one way to get followers is to fill in your profile because this will give them a sense of why should they follow you, especially under the biography. So if I'm under this screen of biography and I say bakery, not good enough. That doesn't really entice people to follow me if I say San Diego bakery. Okay, well, at least they know that I'm in San Diego, and perhaps I'll follow them, and perhaps I'll buy their products. But I have up to 160 characters to write something meaningful here. 
San Diego based bakery specializing in 160 characters for the bio. San Diego bakery specializing in um, healthy versions of classic recipes. Okay, that's giving a little bit more in enticement perhaps to follow. What are you going to see? What are you going to get if you follow me? Because a follow is a captive audience. A follow is, I choose to see everything that you're publishing. Unlike that billboard, I don't want to see that. Unlike that radio ad, I don't want to hear that. Unlike that uh, uh, TV commercial, I don't want to see that. But if I've chosen to follow Victor's Bakery, I want to see that. That's the point of someone following. And yes, there are spam bots and spam accounts, but we're going to ignore them for the moment. We're going to talk about a real customer following you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. They want to see what you're publishing. Pictures, links, coupons, videos, whatever. All the things we'll talk about. I could say here, follow for the latest uh, deals. Deals and coupons. Again, another enticement. Maybe... Uh, maybe you've already got a Facebook account for your business and you have 20 likes there, 20 followers, and you want to get some of those to come over to Twitter. I do have to say that if someone already has followed you on a particular network, probably they won't follow you on another network. They're happy enough to follow you on Facebook. They're happy enough to follow you on Instagram. Why would they also go over to your, to your Twitter? Um, but you could try to entice them by saying something like this, follow for the latest deals and exclusive coupons. We'll talk about it in more detail later, but you could be publishing content on each platform that is unique to each platform. It's much more work, and I'll talk about it later, but for the moment, I'm just thinking about what can I write here in my bio that perhaps tells people what I'm about, why should they follow? Location. We'll see that with most of these networks, people can search a location. And if you're a local business, you want people to find you locally on a map, so it might be useful for you to put a location. Mm, it might not be necessary then to put anything here then if you are a global company. You may not really put anything. You can just simply put United States. website. Here you should put your your main website. As I said at the beginning of the day, the website is the minimal thing nowadays. Uh, you need a website, period. That's basic nowadays. So the social media is the next level for you to get traffic and sales and such, marketing. Uh, you still want your website and you want to direct people back to your website because most networks they're still in the infant stage, the infancy stages where you can sell products. Uh, that is, it's going to be on my main website, right, victorsbakery.com. That's where my shopping cart is. That's where my products are. That's where people can actually buy. I don't exactly sell a product on Twitter. I don't exactly sell a product on Instagram. I promote it and advertise it and build awareness and buzz, but I still have to guide people back to my website or my eBay or my Etsy or Kickstarter or whatever. So I still want some link back to my website from my social networks. That way I can fully do the conversion, such as selling a cupcake. Yes. You know, I, I don't think so. Just force of habit, but I think that's I think that'll work just fine. It should activate it as an active link. Okay. You can do a little bit of color branding. There's some colors built in. If you know your color formula, you can plug that in. Also, how to get your color formula? You can ask during the break. But um, here, you can choose some colors birthday for a person or if you want to do this this will be about you know when was your company founded 
this shows that this is going to be public or private, only me can see it, only certain people can see it. It is optional though, although can I take it back? So the birth date is optional, but you can make it private. On my profile, I don't have my company logo handy with me, but make a note that the, that the logo is square. And pretty much every social network has a spot for you to add a logo, and they're all proportional. They're all either a square, a circle, or like a, maybe a rounded corner square. No, none of these networks really do a rectangular logo or a vertical one. And I see this all the time that a company puts in their rectangular logo and then the network cuts it off. Let me see if I can show an example here. Let's see if they still have it. Yes, let me answer that just one moment. Twitter chargers, yeah, they're still doing it. Look at that. Why didn't they put their square version of the logo? It's cut off. So even big names. Question. Yeah. So even big names um, didn't do it right. Now their logo up here, their branding up here looks great, but not this one here. It's cut off everywhere. And when the icon is small, it looks even worse. So what we should be doing here is company logo on the little square. And then some other kind of branding, whatever you want up here. A picture of the logo, a picture of a product, a picture of your location. You can go off and get inspiration. Let's um, say. Yeah. Question. Did they tell you the image size is for each of those locations? No, but I'll tell you in a moment. Uh, here it is for our college. They've got the college here. Um, it looks vertical, but they still designed the graphic to fit a square. Then up here, they've got a photo of each of the locations. Let's say some other U, some other school, UCSD. I'm just looking at different accounts. Uh, this is not the real UCSD. Oh, it's UC San Diego. OK, over here, again, uh, they don't have their logo, but they've got Geisel Library. And then there are different locations on campus. So, oh. SDSU. We have the SDSU logo, and then a location. So Twitter icon size 2016. Okay. Twitter themselves, I did a little search and I found the Twitter help file, says that the profile photo, which is the little square, should be about 400 pixels sized, 400 by 400 a square, so that way it's high quality enough to be looked at in a, in a good quality in a nice big tablet or monitor, and it's also good enough to be seen on a little screen. That big wide graphic at the top is 1500 pixels wide and 500 pixels tall. It's out of the scope of our class to make these graphics. We're not going to talk about that. But these are the dimensions. You have to figure it out somehow to make these graphics. Ask your graphics person. Um, other information here, 160 characters for that biography. But I'll put these into my notes. These notes that I'm going to add to the folder at the end of the day, I'll put them in here too. So one weird trick to get followers is complete your biography. Spammers don't have a complete biography, and therefore spammers don't get followed. They buy followers. You don't want to buy followers. You want to get real followers. And this will entice people, hopefully, to, to, to follow you, because then that's a captive audience. We're going to take our break. We've been talking for a little while. Uh, we're going to take our break and um, 
edit this as best as you can. I don't have any graphics to upload at the moment, but I'll do it when I get home. And you want to save your changes. We'll take a break. It's about 11.20. We'll take a break until 11.30. If you'd like to print the syllabus, I'll turn the printer on in a moment. If you came in a little bit late, see me to get the ad code. You need to register for the class. And then also make sure you signed in.